Welcome, I'm your host Christina Haskin and tonight I have John Turin, He's president and founder of Sustainable Food Systems LLC in Wallington, Wallingford, Connecticut. He is the leader of, in the movement to bring sustainable healthy food to institutions like universities, hospitals and school districts. He led the behind the scenes team that made Jamie Oliver's food revolution work in Huntington, West Virginia. He is one of the nine chefs chosen to create the Chef Moore school program, which was part of Michelle Obama's Let's Move initiative to combat childhood obesity. He created the Yale Sustainable Food Project at Yale University. He was the executive chef at Aramark and executive chef at uh, Yale University. Thanks. Just a brief introduction. Um, so um, how did you get, first of all, what was your interest in food as a young person, and how did you get involved in being a chef? Were you a chef first, I presume? Sure. Uh, it, I guess it all started when my mom got a little tired of hearing me ask when dinner was going to be ready, and she said, it's time you learned how to cook. So she, uh, she, started, she started me off early on, and uh, it was about the time I was in high school, and I, you know, t taking on part-time jobs, part-time job I had was in a restaurant as a lot of kids did and uh, still didn't know what to do when I was getting out of high school and uh, I had a very wise and uh, foreseeing guidance counselor I guess who said um, have you ever considered culinary school would you like to be a chef and this mm. was before chefs were the rock stars I think they are today but it was still it, in, it uh, enamored me I, I visited Johnson and Wales University in Providence and the rest was history. I, w I knew I was going to go and, and, uh, and go to school to be a chef. And that was a long time ago on a planet <laughs> far, far away. And you went to, uh, you were at um, a conventional food company for um, years, right? Yeah, Maybe. you know, the term conventional, uh, I use that meaning just the, uh, the standard way of preparing food that uh, the industry has gotten to know. And uh, as you articulated it, uh, it, Christina, I've worked in institutional food service so, and that's usually defined as places that have to serve a lot of food to a lot of people for a little bit of money. Uh, schools, hospitals, colleges, and that's where I worked. And those places that I worked for all those years, the primary focus was always on bottom line, you know, and how cost effectively we could we could manage that and, and never really looking at the big picture uh, and that's you know the, the that whole convention that's the term you know conventional food service how much can we prepare how cost effectively not really thinking about the stories behind the food and um, you you went to Yale University as part of that one of your projects for that company correct is it exactly um, I, and that's where things started to change um, <laughs> I understand. Um, I'm a fan of Alice Waters cooking. I mean, she's got great cookbooks and she has a wonderful Chez Panisse restaurant. Yes. But she, tell us a little bit about how she influenced you and what happened there at Yale. Well, the story goes, um, Alice, uh, uh, her daughter was a, was a student at Yale, was a freshman at Yale. And you have to imagine, I was the executive chef. Uh, it was 2001, and it was a, a November Friday, I was out at the Yale Bowl setting up a, the uh, picnic for the next day's the game against the Yale, you know, the Yale Harvard football. And I'm getting ready to serve 6,000 drunk college students a picnic uh, on the next day, and my cell phone rang, and it was my boss. <laughs> and he said, uh, you stop what you're doing, come meet me at the president's office, we have to talk with a parent. And I said, time out a second here, you know you're the one that usually meets with the parents. I've never been called to the president's office. Who is this and what's going on? I'm a little busy here. And he said, it's Alice Waters. So the first thing I had to do was stop and pick up the cell phone <laughs> off the ground because I knew who Alice Waters was. She, her restaurant, Chez Panisse, literally that month had been considered the number one restaurant in the United States in Gourmet Magazine. And Alice said, convinced the university, uh, the president of the university, to think about the impact that we were, we were making on all those students serving conventional food. And she asked the president, could, 
you know, couldn't we serve more sustainable food? And she went on to explain what that meant to the president. And he was enamored uh, and, and believed this was something that need to ha needed to happen. And uh, the, pr the university came to me as the executive chef and said, this is your job. Figure out what this wild, passionate woman from California is doing, uh, is talking about, and make it happen here. And I, and I said, no problem. You know, this is a new challenge. I, I usually like projects. This is the latest. I have one question. What is sustainable food? And right, that's yeah. when Alice took me under her wing. <clears throat> and I, that's when I began to learn about the stories behind the food and the impact that all those decisions I was making all those years for so many people could impact so much in the world and the people around us. So sustainable food, I mean, I kind of know what it is. I mean, I, but it's, um, people usually, I think, identify that with environmental only or. Great question. You know, and you're talking also about health. So can you tell us a little bit about that? In my mind, what I learned and what I now profess, and when people ask just what is sustainable food or what is your focus, I usually say there are four distinct pillars of what sustainable food is, is defined as. One is the environmental impact that food production has on the planet, whether it's pesticides, herbicides, chemicals in the ground, water consumption, um, unsustainable fishing methods, all of those environmental impacts, that's one pillar. The second pillar is the sustainability of our own communities and local businesses, as in local food. Where do our dollars go when we buy food? And in an institution the size of Yale or other such places, that's a lot of money going to the global market. How much can we, how can we do better supporting our local business, businesses? The third pillar are the social issues surrounding animal welfare, uh, employee rights, you know, just the way in, in food business today that um, human rights sometimes are violated or, or the well-being of living beings. Uh, it's just sometimes not right. And, and those are the issues that, that would fall under that social, the social concerns. And the fourth pillar is the sustainability of our own bodies, our health and well-being, or in my case, the thousands of people that I was serving or that we serve out there today. And our children and grandchildren. So, our yeah. kids, my kids, you know, the, the, those, and every decision we make about food impacts those, those issues. Those are the, and when we start to understand the stories behind the food, we can start to say, is that something I want to be a part of? Or is, should I focus more on supporting my local community or human rights uh, and, and, or, or just our own health? And, and those are those are those are the examples. So, with the Yale project, did you you transformed the what people were eating and the way they they processed the I mean the the ingredients that they bought the, you bought fresher food so forth and and then exactly. did the cost come out to be? Yeah, you know, um, I, I, back at Yale and since now that I have my own consulting business and I work with other institutions to help them provide better food. I've yet to run across a, uh, a person or a client that has said it's okay to increase and spend more money. I mean, in today's day and age, we can't afford to do that. So what we did at Yale and what we do now is come up with strategies to save money in some areas so that we can spend more in other areas. So there's, there's a whole list of uh, techniques that can go into providing better food and not having it cost more. See you next time.